and welcome to this quick start tutorial on using the Swixit client. In this short video, I'm just going to take you through the basics, how to make a call, answer a call, transfer in, and basic customization and setup of the client itself. So let's drop down to the desktop and have a quick look. What you can see on the screen is just the basic setup one of the standard skins. Now your particular one may look a little bit different, but don't worry, the functionality remains the same. Start off, if you've logged on correctly, your name will appear here and there won't be any photo of you. So the first thing you can do is put a photo of yourself on the skin. And to do that, just right click up here and select set own picture. So if you press these three dots, you can search your computer for a suitable photograph and click OK. Next, these speed dial buttons. Uh, these are actually a lot more intelligent than just simple speed dials, but you need to start off by populating these with users on your system. So right click on a speed dial button and select properties, and then you can open up the phone book with this icon here. Go to global phone book and pick a user and OK. And we can proceed through the buttons, properties, phone book. And populate all the users. The status of a user can be seen by the colored circle around the photograph. If the circle is grey, the user isn't logged on. If the circle is green, the user is logged on and available to speak. If the circle is red, then the user is in do not disturb. If the circle is amber, then the user is in an away status. You can change your own status at any time by, again, right clicking up here and set yourself to away, in which case your circle goes amber or do not disturb and your circle goes red. Under normal standard working, if you're in an away status or do not disturb status, your phone will not ring. However, it will still present calls. So everyone will know that you're in a do not disturb status, but if they decide to ignore that and press the button, your phone will display the call, but you won't be disturbed with any audible sound. That's the standard working, it can be changed. And if you go onto one of the other training videos where we look at call forwarding, you'll see how you can do a status change and change the call forwarding of your phone. There are multiple pages for your speed dials and you can select any of the pages just by clicking the tab at the top. If you want to store an external number under a speed dial button, just right click properties. Now you put the trunk access code. Now in the UK, that would be a nine. And then you put your telephone number in and give it a label and click OK. Obviously, there'll be no status here, but this is a speed dial to that telephone number. You can change the headings on the tabs by right clicking and select properties. So so that's how you change the look of the client. The next thing to set up is the audio devices that you wish to use with your soft phone. The client itself will support three concurrent USB devices, and these can be configured and selected from this bar here. By right clicking up here and select properties, you can select the device type and the device used for that type. At the moment, I'm using a hands-free module, and the system has automatically picked that up. If I have a USB headset, that should be automatically selected under here, but you can change the configuration just by pressing configure. And then from the drop down list, select the USB device that you wish to use in that instance. You can select which device is used automatically when you dial out by selecting the device and pressing the default button. If you have multiple devices, connected you can switch manually between the devices by pressing the icon associated with it up here to make an outside call all you have to do is go down to the dial pad here and type in the number don't forget nine for an outside line 
and press enter. You will take the first available line on your system, in this case line one, and the system will connect. Hello. The person you have called is not available at the moment. You can hang up by pressing the red hang up key. Transferring a call is really simple on this system. Whether your call is an inbound call or an outbound call, to transfer it, Hello. to transfer the call, simply the press the speed Please dial button for the person you wish to transfer the call through to, After in this case, Sean. You will see your first line has gone on hold and it's now ringing on the second line. To complete the transfer, after you've announced it, press the transfer key. To come back to the original caller, you can toggle backwards and forwards like that. To disconnect the call, hang up. An alternative method for transferring a call. An alternative method of transferring the call is simply to drag and drop the call across. Until the user answers the call, until the user picks up the call, it will remain on your phone in the status transferring. You can grab the call back at any time simply by clicking on it. Let's have a look at a couple of other buttons on the skin. This button here is your last number redial. If you hover over it, you'll see the last number you dialed. And if you right click on it, you'll see the last group of numbers you've dialed. And you can select each one. If you have the facility to record, and this is ad hoc recording for a user only, and this is not centralized call recording, which is usually done for regulatory purposes. At any time you're in a conversation, by pressing the record button, you can make your own personal recording. These recordings can be accessed by right clicking on the button and going to recorded conversations, and they will be listed here. So just a couple of other things to quickly show you. There is a phone book. The phone book has the global phone book, i.e. all the users on your system. And then we have a personal phone book for your own use, and you can add your own entries. In the phone book, you do not have to put the trunk access code in. There is an advantage to using the phone book over the speed dial buttons, and that is the dial by name feature built into the system. So I just stored Pizza Hut in my phone book and I can access that simply by typing Pizza Hut. And there's the number taken from the phone book. This dial by name feature will also work for any contacts that are in your Outlook and for all internal users. So I can actually dial Roger Moore simply by typing Roger in here. And there is Roger Moore and I can select it from the list. And so a couple of quick tips. It is possible to dial from any application that's on your screen. Simply highlight a telephone number and press F11 and Swix will dial it. For example, if I go to Google and search for a telephone number, so all you have to do is highlight the telephone number and press F11 on your keyboard and Swix will dial it automatically inserting the trunk access code. This will work in any application, emails, spreadsheets, Word documents, wherever you see a telephone number, highlight it and press F11. And it doesn't matter which format that telephone number is in. If it's in international format, plus four, four, plus three, seven, plus one, whatever, Swix will dial the number for you, nothing to do. Highlight a number on the screen, press F11, and Swix dials it. Finally, under settings and user profile, you can configure how Swix is going to work for you on your desktop. I won't go through every one, I'll let you play with this, but a couple of recommendations. Pop up on ringing. If that is active, then when a call comes in, the Swixit client will come up on your screen. If you only have a small screen, then that could pop up in front of a document that you're working on. By switching this off, you'll get a small notification icon in the bottom right hand side of the screen telling you there's an incoming call. And if you click on that, you will answer it. Secondly, this minimized tray icon, my recommendation is to switch that off. 
and then switch will stay on your toolbar at the bottom of the screen and you can quickly access it with your mouse. And my final recommendation as a headset user, I find it more convenient to have a keyboard shortcut to bring Swix up on the screen. So if you go to keyboard and then from the drop down list, select pop up Swix it. You can now assign a keyboard shortcut. So if I was to do control S for example, and press assign and click OK. And if I minimize Swix from the screen, when I press Control S, it just pops up. So that's just a quick start on how. That's just a quick start guide. You will find more information under the help menu. You can go to a quick start guide, which will bring up this in your browser. And there is more advanced help available from the Help Center and from the forums. For more information on how to get the best out of your client, please get in touch with your local reseller. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back with more videos very soon.